Hello, everyone. This is Sergio from Impatio Frutal coming at you. Today I'm going to be showing you my uh, experiment. These are Thailand white guavas. I started these guavas uh, last year and uh, early in the spring I left them outside for too long uh, trying to get it to harden to the cold weather. And I forgot they were outside, so they were experiment uh, 26 degrees, and it was the plant. Uh, this was the at that time that was uh, the main trunk, and it froze up all the way down here. So these two shoots, they just came up after. So now she's uh, two feet tall, and uh, hopefully next year she'll be producing some uh, uh, white guavas. Right next to it. This one is a pink Thai guava. And this baby, I got this baby, uh, hey, look at that. It's a worm. That's what's eating the leaf. Look at that. As you can see, you see that worm there? Look at that, right there. Oh, where's my finger? There you go. See that little thing there? That's a worm. That little sucker has been eating my plant. I'm gonna take him down. Upon. That's how you eliminate pests. So he was feasting on my pink guava. It was not nice. So this one, it's only uh, six, uh, I don't know, 10 months old. I started this one in the winter time. All right, so I have more here. And that one is as big as, well, a little bit smaller than the bigger one, but that's just about it. And that other baby one, that's about it. So I got two and two, two pink and two white white, white guavas. Um, so all right, so I'm up here in the yard and I don't see any kiwi, but if you go under, well, you're gonna see this thing is loaded. This thing has so much kiwis, it is amazing. I don't know what I'm gonna do with so much kiwi. Everywhere, it's loaded with it. And the thing is, it's starting to ripe. I mean, they've been ripening for three weeks almost, but uh, the numbers is just increasing. So if I start to look in here, it's hard for me to, to pick. Oh, there we go. Some of these are just ripe. And look, look, everywhere we go, there's tons of it. It's just that it's hard to go with the camera in one hand and pick up right here for you to be able to see because you kind of lose focus. Uh, yeah, here we go. Look at that. that, that is so soft. The head comes off. So when you're picking this and you're gonna give it to somebody, you have to pull it, uh, kind of clipping it with your fingernails. So that way you have uh, a complete fruit to give to somebody. So I'm gonna put this over here because I just find out something in my yard. Mm. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Guys, you gotta plant some kiwis. Not only, not only, they will be the longest producing uh, fruits in your yard. Um, this will be producing for over two months. All, all, the way, all the way to the end of October. And you've already been <clears throat> picking fruit for three weeks. So, um, another thing that I wanted to show you is the popos. The popos are starting to ripe. I got a bunch here. Let me move that leaf out of there. So I got a bunch. See the stem right there? From a single flower, I got five fruits. And this baby plant, which is only four and a half feet tall, and it's going sideways because the weight of that bunch is over two pounds. And it's only fried fruits in there. So I'll show you another branch. And the reason why, why you see this one is tied up, because it weights a lot. Like, look over here. There's three more. And although they look yellow, but they're not ripe yet. But I think I, I touched this one. It was soft. Oh yeah, this one is ripe. See, they already start to ripen up. 
Oh, here you go. Let me tell you something. Oh, the smell of the pawpaw fruit is so amazing. You just gotta have one of these in your house. The whole house is gonna be involved in this fragrance. So, we're gonna put this thing over here with this other fruit and I'm gonna keep on going. So, I just um, was looking at my other pawpaws and I found another small pawpaw. And I'll show you this. Uh, sometimes in your yard, you get volunteer plants. Um, look, look, look at these beautiful tomatoes. Look at the color. They are variegated. They have like a green lines in it. Um, mm, very sweet. Mm, tremendous flavor. Yeah. Definitely gonna grab some of these. Mm. Beautiful tomatoes. Now, see this other one here? Another volunteer plant. What happens is when you have volunteer plants that you don't have in your regular garden, they'll produce a ton of tomatoes because they, they wherever they touch in the ground, they'll grow some roots and they'll get more sus sustainability. So they have a lot of fruit, but what happens here is you got a lot of uh, snails. So they'll start biting on the fruit. So although it produces tons of fruit, lots of it get lost to the snails and they end up biting the fruit. All right, so I wanna show you guys the popo, how big they got. This is my mango popoa. Look how big they got. I'm going to show you another bunch. Oops, that has five more popoas right there. Let's see if I can pick up this more there. There are four or five more, more up there. And those are actually about almost 10 feet high from the ground. So I also have is other variety called NC1. Look at those. Look at those. There's one with three, one with four, and there's more in the background of it. I don't know if you can see it, there it is. Yeah, it's, it's hard to, uh, to maneuver. But what I wanna see is this one up here. Although this one of the smallest one, this one is, oh, look at that, it fell off. I didn't even have to grab it. It was already, mm, it was already ripe. All right, so, now we're gonna show you, well, I am gonna show you what I've been so waiting for. Now look, <laughs> look at the cage that I put around my fig over here. Cause I didn't want any uh, night intruder to uh, come and take on my, my fig. This is my Italian Abbeverian fig. As you're gonna see here, it's already bended down. Uh, oh, look at that, it fell off too. Yes, I moved it. But anywho, so I removed all the leaves from the plant and uh, now it's starting to wrap up. And I also have some young ones. Okay, here we go. So I have some young one, but they, uh, those, those burgundy on the top, those are just too young. The ones that have the, the light green color, those are the mature ones, and those are the ones that are gonna ripe. But look at the size of that fig. I think it's one of the biggest fig I got in my yard at any time. Although, last year when I really started getting some, some figs. So we're gonna get this popcorn and this fig to see what it looks like. Right. So let's see. Oh yeah, okay. So now we have two pawpaws. We have these huge figs. Got these tomatoes. 
I'm gonna test, I start tasting this. Now, now look at the, uh, the kiwis, how they are very smooth the skin, no fuzz, and you just eat them like a grape. Mm. And the flavor is better than any kiwi you're gonna get from the store. For one, it doesn't have the acidity that you get from the kiwis in the store because they are thick and they are too young. And if you have kids, and for adults too, you're gonna love the sweet taste and the flavor. Mm. That is delicious. So, this one is my first popoa for this year. Today is uh, September the 20th. And the way I eat my popoa is I use the skin as a vessel, kind of. And you just pass a knife around it. Okay. Go on. Open that thing up. Now, some popoa. Mmm. Oh, it smells so good. Some popoas are yellow, yellow color inside. But this one just, just put them in your mouth and it melts right in. So, mmm. <laughs> oh, this is so good. This is so good. Now you see the seeds, the seeds, they have a dark color and they look like the sour sap. Um, but they are, mmm. Oh, good. Wish you guys could taste this. So, anyhow, it's, a, it's custard. Put them in your mouth and it melts. Delicious. And I noticed that these seeds, they're not as big as last year. I don't know why. Mm. Remember that I cross pollinated this because this one is too far away from the other plants so I have to bring pollen from the other plants and do the uh, cross-pollination so my dog is asking me to give her a kiwi so I'm gonna throw her from here she's out there in the yard that way she stops uh, barking because she's making a lot of noise so anyhow this is delicious and if you got a chance to get a popoa. Mm. Grab it by the horn because it's uh, the only of the uh, sweet sap and sour sap family uh, that can grow in the cold weather that is actually original from here, from New England. And this is on 6B, so this is the cold weather. So now we're gonna see what this uh, Italian everbearing fig looks like. And I'm gonna save half for my better half because she wants to taste this. I just could not wait. Look at this. Look at that jelly gooey goodness. Oh, man. that looks so good. Mm, I see what it tastes like. Oh, this was definitely worth the wait. It's like a sweet jelly. It is delicious. Mm. I have to. Mm. Yeah, definitely gonna save that for my better half. She'll be very happy with it. So I just couldn't leave it on the on the plant any longer because it was gonna rain tonight. So I didn't want to get waterlogged. So here you go, guys, from Pachi Frutal. Oh, also, this uh. uh Variegated tomatoes, and these were uh, these are another delicious from the yard. So there you go from Pati Frutal. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a good evening.